everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. Um, just letting you all connect to audio. I think that's everyone in. Uh, so welcome to this talk with All About Law and Erwin Mitchell. We're very excited to have you for the best part of two hours this evening. Um, I would just like to ask that everyone make sure that their microphones are on mute so there's not any interruptions during the speech. Um, and also, if you have any technical issues, please message me privately. I'm Izzy. Um, you'll see my name's all about law next to me, so you'll know it's the right person. Um, but yeah, without further ado, I will hand over to Georgina to start the presentation. Great. Thank you very much, Izzy. Um, yeah, good evening, everybody, and welcome to um, Erwin Mitchell's Insight Evening to Leeds, Manchester, Newcastle and Sheffield. I'm Georgina Naylor, and I'm one of the early careers managers at Erwin Mitchell, and I've been with the firm since around 2016. Um, I'm currently based in the Sheffield office, but as you can see, based in the spare room at the moment with a load of junk behind me. So apologies for that. Um, hopefully we're going to go through lots of information this evening that you're going to find really useful and insightful. So if we could just go on to the next slide, Izzy, that'd be great. So just going to talk you through um, the presentation. So we're going to give a short introduction about Erwin Mitchell um, and give you some information there. We're then going to move on to a session that's going to be led by our early careers regional representatives from each of the offices. And they're going to talk about the seats and the departments that we have in each of these locations. Um, we're going to have um, some talks from our trainees as well. Um, around a case or a deal that they've worked on and how they find working at the firm um, as well. And then finally, I'll give you some information around how to apply for training contracts or vacation schemes. Uh, between six and seven, we've got some networking, so we've got some breakout rooms. Um, more than happy for you to move around the breakout rooms, but they'll be based on location. Um, and also, I'll be in a breakout room as well. So if you've got any questions about the application process or anything related to early careers, then you can pop in and see me as well. So if we could just move on to the next slide. So some facts and figures about Erwin Mitchell. So first of all, we have around 3000 colleagues, including 240 partners, and we've got 15 UK office locations. In terms of trainees, we have about 100 trainees in the business at any one time, uh, and they are based in 11 of our office locations. And all the information is on our website and in our online brochure regarding which locations and which departments are in which offices. So the firm was established in 1912 um, and that was in Sheffield. So Sheffield is seen as our head office um, with the largest number of employees. Um, and now we are the second largest litigator in the UK, uh, ranking number one for overall client service by Legal 500. We also have our own charities foundation, the IMCF, and we've raised over two million in charitable donations. Um, through this charity, supporting local communities, which you'll hear a bit more about later on. We also have an international presence. So while we don't have any international officers, we are members of something called First Law International. And that's a Brussels-based global network of around 85 independent law firms. And we represent lots of clients um, in over 200 countries. And we've got like a, a I suppose, a best friends network um, in terms of referring work uh, throughout. Um, different countries. Um, we've also very proud to be number one super brand in the legal sector and to be the official legal partners for England Rugby and also British Rowing. And for 11th consecutive year, we've had growth in the firm and in 2020-21, that totaled 276 million. Um, we're also what you call a full service law firm. So that means whatever advice our clients need, we can help. And to date, we've helped over 1 million clients. Um, and finally, we're very proud to be ranked in the top 100 by the Times. And we're 78th in that list and fifth place in terms of law firms of choice. So a few facts and figures there, which are useful to understand uh, around who we are. Um, and a little bit more information about us. If we could just move on to the next slide. So we're just gonna talk through about our client service areas um, and what does that actually mean? So this is where our legal and operations sit within Irwin Mitchell. And we deliver our legal services across these seven areas. Um, and it's also where our business and operational support teams sit as well. 
So our trainee solicitors sit across these seven areas, um, which is commercial advisory and disputes, complex personal injury, corporate and finance, court of protection and public law, family law, property, and private client services. Um, and historically, Owen Mitchell have had trainees in what we might call the more personal legal services and then trainees in the more business orientated services as well. Um, but what we've done recently is we've created these seven areas rather than two distinct um, streams to the business. And as a trainee, that means that you can now pick any of these seven areas um, for your training to be across. Um, it obviously relates to which office you're applying to, which we'll come on to in a moment. Um, but it is giving our trainees more breadth and choice in terms of the seats that they may want to do in their training contract. And the reason why we've um, decided to create these seven areas is for our clients, basically, and it gives them a much better service. We're able to cross sell um, the different functions to them. Um, and often our clients' issues are intertwined and this breadth of experience that we've got allows us to be able to provide the best service to them. So if a client's just gone through a merger, we could help in, update their employment contracts. Um, and it allows clients to stick with us for all their legal services, rather than going to lots of different law firms. Um, and as I say, that impacts you if you come to us as a trainee and you're able to access all of these different areas. Um, so we're gonna move on now to our early careers regional representatives. Um, so they're gonna talk through what that role actually means and then give you some inside information about each of the officers we're looking at today. So I'm gonna press over to Chris. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, George. Um, so um, I'm one of the early careers regional representatives and I'm uh, the um, one of the two regional representatives uh, in the Sheffield office, um, there is at least one uh, in each of uh, in each of our offices, uh, two in the uh, in the larger ones. Um, but um, well, what do we do? Well, um, we've got a really big support network for our uh, trainees, um, both locally and, and nationally. Um, there's the support from the early careers team itself, uh, also, of course, from uh, the individual trainee supervisors. Um, but um, our role as the regional representatives is to um, support the early careers team in, in sort of implementing the firm's early career strategy, um, but also to act as a kind of point of contact for, for trainees and not just the trainees, any of our other colleagues as well who are um, fall under the umbrella of early careers. So that's also our apprentice and uh, Silex populations. And um, so we kind of act as a, a lead point of contact on the ground, if you like, um, for uh, for the trainees in um, that, that, that fall within our office. And um, the role uh, involves us um, supporting uh, through the assessment process. So frequently, um, well, always i think we will be um we'll form part of the uh panel during the assessment centers so we get involved um either doing the interviews or assessing the group exercises or um any of the other um assessments that get carried out on the assessment center um we then help liaising with the early careers team when it comes to determining uh, who should be offered the opportunities um we uh, attend events like this to help um uh, talk about early careers at Erwin Mitchell and um, the, um, the, the roles that are available. Um, we help with the induction, uh, so help to uh, help get our trainees settled in and sort of provide a bit more advice and support. And then uh, frequently as, as, as trainees move through their seats, um, uh, we'll catch up um, sort of on a fairly regular basis just to kind of check in, see how they're doing. Um, often find that um, we tend to uh, be asked to address um, perhaps more well-being concerns uh, or, or sort of broader questions about, you know, advice about seat choices or, or, or you know, career advice more generally that perhaps um, trainees you know, don't, uh, don't want to speak to their supervisor about or perhaps need a broader perspective. So we, we're kind of there to complement um, the, uh, the work that the early careers team do and also um, the um, uh, the, the the individual trainee supervisors. So, um, I mean, 
I hope that's uh, in a succinctish way explain what it is that, that we all do as the, the early careers uh, regional representatives. And uh, I think I'm passing over to Oliver, am I now, to talk about specifically the Leeds office. Lovely. Yes, thanks, Chris. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, my name's Oliver Collett. I'm a senior associate solicitor in the Leeds office. I work in the workplace illness department and I specialise in asbestos related lung disease claims. Um, I've been at IM for almost four years now. Uh, previously, I worked for a firm called Thompson's Solicitors, where I was a trainee and then worked for Thompson's for 16 years before then deciding uh, to change tack and, and come and join Erwin Mitchell. Um, I'm very much a Leeds lad. Um, wasn't born in the city, uh, as you may notice a calendar behind me. That, that's the that's the city of my birth. But I was very much raised in Leeds, went to school in Leeds, uh, and came back to Leeds uh, following university. So uh, very passionate about my city, um, uh, and living and working in the city is uh, is a great option in my eyes. Um, in the Leeds office uh, of Erwin Mitchell, we cover all seven client service areas. Um, so I'm just going to talk very briefly about each one. Um, if you just show the, sl yep, the slide. So the slide there um, shows all the service areas um, that we've got in Leeds uh, and the seats that we have. Firstly, we've got the commercial advisory and disputes area. So our commercial litigation and disputes lawyers work with clients to understand and manage risks to businesses and to resolve disputes effectively. Um, we have seats available in Leeds in the commercial team, employment team and the litigation team. Um, moving on to complex personal injury, uh, that's one of the largest uh, specialist personal injury teams in the country. Um, in Leeds, our lawyers have helped thousands of people to claim compensation following life-changing injuries recovering millions of pounds in compensation. Uh, compensation in these cases is only part of the story though, of course, and uh, our focus is very much on trying to help our clients access rehabilitation, medical care, uh, support services uh, that they need to make the best recovery possible. Um, and in the area of work that I'm involved in, um, uh, sadly working with people with life-limiting uh, illnesses uh, caused by asbestos exposure, uh, then we're also able to try and help them access um, novel new developing, developing treatments, life extending treatments uh, that can only be accessed through, through private funds and, and successful litigated cases. Um, in Leeds, uh, we've got seats available in medical negligence, serious injury and our workplace illness uh, teams. Moving on to corporate and finance. Uh, so our corporate and finance lawyers help to grow and develop and achieve commercial and strategic objectives uh, for our business clients. Uh, we assist at every stage of a business's life cycle. Um, and in Leeds, uh, we cover all three areas of uh, corporate banking and finance and our restructuring and insolvency team. Court of protection and public law. Um, in certain circumstances, family members and loved ones may no longer have the mental capacity required to make important decisions regarding their finances. Um, in this instance, our court protection solicitors can help. For clients who feel their rights have been infringed, then our public law and human rights lawyers uh, can come in and help make a legal challenge uh, against government departments or local councils, hospitals, care homes, health trusts, schools, uh, local education authorities, or, or any public body. Um, our court of protection team in particular, uh, understandably work very closely with our complex personal injury departments um, to help support um, some of our uh, more seriously injury, injured um, clients who, uh, uh, who unfortunately no longer have a mental capacity to, uh, to make their own decisions. 
Um, and uh, in Leeds, uh, we only have uh, the seats available for, for quarter protection, though. Um, moving on to family law, uh, our family law solicitors can support with any issues from making a pre or post nuptial agreement through to dealing with finances after a divorce. As you can see on the screen, we have expertise across a wide range of areas uh, in family law. Uh, that, that includes LGBT plus family uh, law. We've got Chambers and Partners and the Legal 500 recognise us as having one of the UK's leading family law teams. Um, and and we've, we've got one of those teams at, um, in Leeds. So moving on to property, we regularly act on behalf of investors, landlords, homeowners, leaseholders in relation to all manner of property related issues. Um, and in Leeds, uh, the only seat available there is in real estate team. Um, then finally, we have our private client services area. Um, our expert wills, trusts and estate solicitors can help structure estates in the best way to protect clients wealth for the future, uh, provide for their loved ones and minimize any tax liabilities. Uh, the team has considerable experience with high value estates and international wealth as well and understand the unique challenges this can present. Uh, in Leeds, the trainee seats that will be available are in both tax trust and estates uh, and also in the uh, will trust and estate disputes team. Um, so as we've already mentioned that there will be a, a networking session at the end, there'll be two rooms uh, for Leeds uh, manned by um, uh, myself and various colleagues from the Leeds office. I'd encourage you to go into both rooms and, and speak to all the different individuals if you want to learn a bit more about Leeds um, as an office uh, or Leeds as a city uh, and we'd be only too happy to uh, to answer your questions uh, questions there. Um, I'll now be handing over to uh, Matt uh, who's going to talk to you about the Manchester office. Hi, Matt. Um, I'm not sure if it's just me. Oh, no, I've just got a message from Georgina. I, I can't hear you. Um, it doesn't say you're on mute. You are unmuted, so I'm not sure what the issue is here. Um, Do you want to try coming out and then coming back in again, Matt? Yeah, if you come out, I'll let you back in. Sorry about that, everybody. Can't always trust the technology. The gremlins have got in again. <laughs> as you can see, just while we wait for Matt, as you can see from the slide, we've again, um, we look at each of our offices across the seven areas. Um, and you can see there the different departments that we have in Manchester um, for each of those areas, um, which Matt was just going to uh, talk you through. Um, so we're, we're waiting, as you can see, under commercial advisory and disputes, we've got commercial and litigation um, and complex PI. We've got medical negligence. We've actually got Ministry of Defence here in Manchester, uh, serious injury and the workplace injury illness team as well. Um, corporate and finance, uh, we've got a corporate team and we do actually have a trainee who's covering banking and finance at the moment, supervised by our leads team. So we do have some crossover between teams and locations sometimes. Um, course of protection and public law, uh, both of those are available in Manchester. Um, family, we do have a family team in Manchester. Um, within property, we've got more teams there. So we've got construction, planning, and real estate. 
And then under the private client services, we've obviously got just there, will, trust and estate disputes. Um, I don't know if Matt's... Yeah, he's just come back in. Matt, do you... Ah, know? right. Okay. Um, is, we'll see if we... is that now working? Yeah. It is, yes. Excellent. I'm sorry about that, everybody. I don't know what happened there. That's it was all right. Before. Um, <laughs> I've just gone through the slide, Matt, in terms of just obviously identifying which um, departments are available. But obviously, if you could just go through your background yeah, um, cool. and a bit um, more about the Manchester office. Of course. And thank you for, for covering that. Um, so I, I'm Matt Garson. I'm a senior associate uh, solicitor in our serious injury team in Manchester. Um, my background is that I uh, did my law degree at Newcastle University uh, before moving to the College of Law in Chester. Um, that's how long ago it was. It was College of Law, uh, not the University of Law. Um, after that, I, I joined a small firm in, in Altrincham uh, called Alexander Harris doing uh, medico uh, clinical negligence work. Um, but we then merged with Irwin Mitchell in 2006 to open up the Irwin Mitchell Manchester office. Um, we've grown that from a relatively small office of about 30 people to, I think, now the third largest uh, IM office. Um, and as George will have explained, we now cover all seven uh, work streams from that office. Um, for myself, I, I specialise in uh, serious injury work that includes uh, brain or spinal injury work. It might include amputation work or fatal accident work covering both adults and uh, children, uh, unfortunately. It's it's a very challenging area of law, but very rewarding um, because actually we can make a real difference with, to people's lives. And um, if you join one of uh, the breakout rooms that I'm in, um, I'm quite happy to share some of my stories of some of the really, really rewarding work that we've been able to achieve. Uh, for me, Manchester is a, a great office. Um, we've recently I say recently, it's probably now four years ago because of the pandemic, but we've moved into a new city centre offices, which are um, fantastic, I have to say. Um, I'd have an open mind about which area of law you're going to do your seat in. Um, don't necessarily have a fixed view because actually any seat that you're in, you'll be working with real experts and you'll be able to pick things up, even if it's not necessarily the ideal choice for you. You'll pick up tips, you'll pick up skills, to, uh, you'll be able to apply in whatever area you go to work in. Um, I'm now going to hand over, after that very short piece, I'm afraid, uh, I'm going to hand over to Alexis for the Newcastle office. Hi, um, I'm, uh, so I'm Alexis Tullock. I'm a senior associate in the Newcastle office in the medical negligence department. Um, uh, I have been at Owen Mitchell for four years. My background is that um, I'm a Northeast girl. I'm from Northeast. I went to Newcastle University. I trained um, up here, uh, first of all, at Ward Hadaway, and then I qualified as a um, defendant medical negligence lawyer and worked at Eversheds and DACB for um, uh, 18 years before I uh, saw the light and converted to um, uh, claimant work, uh, basically because I wanted a, a more rewarding experience, I think, um, uh, uh, than the doing defendant work offered. Um, and having decided to make that change, um, uh, coming to Irma Mitchell was a bit of a no-brainer for me um, because I'd seen how they operated from the other side. Um, I knew that, um, you know, it was the largest dedicated medical negligence law firm in the country, that um, Newcastle was a top tier firm for that type of work. Um, and, you know, we've mentioned before about the depth of services and the holistic approach that, that Owen Mitchell was able to offer their clients. Um, we're able to offer complementary services, particularly in the Newcastle office. Um, but also, um, you know, we, we can basically deal, provide sort of a full service and deal with all aspects of our clients' lives, um, you know, which is great. And um, we also have brilliant relationships, um, really strong relationships with local therapists, um, case managers, charities, which mean that we can provide support and rehabilitation for our clients. Um, in, in terms of um, Newcastle, I think one of the things that really struck me when I arrived here um, was how, how sort of valued our, our junior members of the team are, whether that's paralegals, trainees, and also that we have a lot of people in senior positions who started life um, at Owen Mitchell as trainee solicitors who progressed to associates 
senior associates and partners. So I think that was one of the things that really impressed me joining over Mitchell, that obvious career progression and valuation, sort of that value of, of the people that work here and wanting to have a career pathway for people. Um, in terms of the Newcastle office, um, we are very personal injury orientated um, uh, and that's what we're particularly well known for. Um, the seats that are available in Newcastle. So in our complex personal injury um, team, we have three seats that are available um, in medical negligence, serious injury and workplace injury. Um, and then in the court of protection and public law team, we have seats in court of protection and public law. Um, and what's good about sort of all of that is that it, it's really very much that all of those seats are very complementary. Um, and so I think even I think somebody's already mentioned that, you know, have an open mind when you go into these seats. You don't know what you're actually going to enjoy. And even if it's something that you don't want to do long term, you'll get experience, which actually helps you see how everything fits together. Um, which I think is really important. Um, and in terms of Newcastle, um, well, um, I think what's good about Newcastle is it, it is a small office. It's friendly. Everybody's very approachable. Um, we, we get visitors who come to our Newcastle office always saying how friendly it is. Um, uh, like I said, I think it's, it's good that we've got um, a lot of our senior leaders in the Newcastle office who, who've been trainees here in the past. They can provide you with support about, you know, what it was like, how to progress, give advice and tips. They've been there. Um, and Newcastle is just a great place to live. I would say that I'm from here, but um, it is a very vibrant city um, and it, it's, um, there's a lot going on. Uh, so and now I'll hand over to Chris and Jason in the Sheffield office. Yep, thanks uh, Alexis and uh, good evening everybody. Pick up the baton in uh, in Sheffield, it's a bit like Eurovision, um, going around all the all the offices. So uh, thank you for that. So I'm I'm Jason, Jason Newell. I'm a, a senior associate solicitor and I'm head of the regulatory investigations group at uh, Mitchell and we sit within the commercial advisory and disputes service line that, um, that you've heard about uh, from Oliver a little earlier ago, a uh, while ago when he was saying about the, the different um, teams that we've got. So I am based at the Sheffield office. I had um, a traditional route perhaps in, in relation to, to qualifications as a solicitor, uh, did my law degree in Leicester. Um, I did my LPC in Sheffield and then did my training contract with a firm very, very different to, to IM. Um, it was a fairly small high street firm in, in Doncaster, uh, but I still, like, like I am, I, I did um, three different seats. I did rather than the four that you do at I am um, during that and, and had a real mixture of, of a variety of work. I then qualified into the criminal team, um, a criminal department at the firm that I was at. And essentially thereafter, my daily work was each day in the magistrates court, the crown court, the police station. Dealing with, dealing with defence um, sort of criminal work. I joined IM about three and a half years ago, a bit, bit more than that now. And I wanted to, to diversify a little bit more. Um, so moved away from just like the general crime that I've been doing before and moved into to the more regulatory, um, commercial, um, white collar sort of crime stuff um, and the real variety of, of work that we do uh, within, within my team um, at, at IM. I'm obviously, uh, like all the others, one of the early careers regional reps for, for, for Sheffield. Chris is the other that I'll hand you over to in a minute to tell you a little bit about him. Um, I personally think it's great to, to be involved with, as one of the early careers reps. You know, I see the trainees, the future of I am, the future of our profession. Um, so it's great for me to, to be involved with uh, the trainees that we have uh, during their two years, um, particularly within the Sheffield office uh, and the role that we have that, that, that Chris said about. Um, so before we go on to, to going through the, the different areas that, that we have, the seats within um, Sheffield, I'll hand over to Chris to, to say a little, about, a little bit more about him. You saw him earlier, but um, here he is again. Yeah, thanks, Jason. Um, yeah, me again. Um, so um, I, too, am a uh, senior associate solicitor. Um, I, um, I work in the serious injury department here uh, in Sheffield, and um, I suppose you'd call me a lifer. Um, I will have been with the firm 18 years in, uh, well, in a couple of weeks' time, actually. So, um, 
it's I'm, I'm fast approaching uh, the stage where I will have spent more of my time working at Erwin Mitchell than I have um, not working at Erwin Mitchell, which is a, a an interesting um, thought, but I'm not quite there yet. Um, but I um, took a fairly unconventional route to qualification. I um, joined, I did a law degree. Uh, I, I came to study here in Sheffield. I'm not from a million miles away, though. I was uh, born and, and raised in, in Buxton, so uh, about 45 minutes away from Sheffield in the Peak District. Uh, but I came to uni uh, here in Sheffield. Um, I won't lie, I came because at the time it had the best nightlife in the country, so I uh, that was a key factor for me. But it also happened to have good universities, which was, uh, and still does, obviously, uh, which was a, a, a happy um, coincidence. But um, I did my law degree, but then decided I'd probably, well, I knew I'd had enough of studying for the time being, so I thought I'd want to get out and get a job. Got a job as a paralegal and um, basically worked my way um, up working through, the, working in uh, the serious injury team. Um, I'd actually been promoted to senior associate before I eventually qualified, uh, which I did um, through the equivalent means process. So effectively like time served, I guess. Um, rather, so I never did a formal training contract, um, but um, yeah, that, now I, I, I specialize in um, acting for um, seriously injured people and also uh, I, my practice these days tends to involve a lot of fatal accidents. So I do a lot of work um, with bereaved families. I'm also a trustee of a charity that supports um, bereaved families and um, do some do some work about today. The reason why I'm looking smarter than I perhaps otherwise would have done is I've uh, been out doing some training for the police as well. So um, quite a lot going on. Um, I um, I also um, had the opportunity just I'll, I'll take the opportunity just to endorse what Alexis said a few minutes ago because uh, about four years ago I had the opportunity of doing a year long secondment in the Newcastle office and I can personally vouch for the fact that they are a fab team and a fab office. So. Uh, if you don't want to come to Sheffield, go to Newcastle instead, because they're great. Uh, anyway, sorry, I just couldn't resist that little plug there. Um, so I think Jason's now going to take you through um, some of the seats that we've got available in um, in Sheffield. Great. Yeah, th thanks for that, Chris. So you, you can see there on the on the slide the areas that, that we do. And Sheffield's the biggest office. We offer seats in, um, in all of the seven new service areas that we've got. So specifically look first at the commercial um, advisory and disputes there on the, on the left hand side. Uh, there's opportunities for trainees in the, in the Sheffield office to, to do seats in employment, in litigation and in my team uh, regulatory investigations group, all there identified in blue. Um, moving on to the corporate and finance um, service area. Again, you can see there there's an opportunity to do a seat within the restructuring and insolvency team within the Sheffield office. Uh, and then lastly for me, property, um, the, the property work stream there, again in Sheffield, uh, being quite a large office, we, we have opportunities to do seats in um, construction, in real estate, in real estate disputes, and in residential property. Yeah, and then uh, just picking up uh, from that uh, is um, we've got in the complex PI department, so um, uh, sort of where my home is, we've got medical negligence, um, we've got uh, my own team serious injury, uh, and then we've got the work workplace illness teams. Uh, we've got in the court of protection and public law seats in both of those areas. Uh, we've got um, a um, family law uh, seat in the family law team and then in uh, the private client, bleh, private client services uh, we've got the wills, trusts and estate disputes. Um, so there's obviously you know as you can see a wide variety of seats that you can do um, across um, across Sheffield and it's the same with many of the other uh, offices as well and so I just you know really just endorse what uh, I think it was Alexis said about just keeping an open mind. Um, you know, over the, the time when I've been in this role and supporting trainees, um, you know, I've, I've, it's something I've banged on about over and over, and it never fails to surprise me the, the amount of time that, that people say to me, Do you know, I never thought I was going to enjoy 
you know, real estate, and it, but it, it's actually really fantastic. And, you know, I never thought I'd want to do it, but actually I can see myself um, uh, maybe practicing that in the future. So um, just, you know, whilst on paper, you know, it might not be, you might not end up with the choices that you thought you wanted, but if you go into them with an open mind, um, I'm pretty sure you'll end up surprising yourself. So um, yeah, that's probably top tip and just to uh, endorse something else Alexis has said. Thanks, Chris. Great. Oh, sorry. Go on, Jason. All right. Um, I, I cut off. Sorry. So I don't know if it's still for me to do my last piece. Is that, is that right? Please. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you've now heard from, from all of the offices that, that we're coming from um, for you this evening and, and opportunity to, to give to you uh, that the seat choices that are available. If you're successful in, in securing your training contract, we will obviously discuss with you as individuals that you seek preferences. Um, and we do try, or the early careers team and George and her team do try to, to, to meet specific requests and accommodate people um, as far as we're able. But obviously the, the seat allocation process, it's not an exact science um, because the exact number of seats that, that might be available at any given time is, is driven by the needs of the business um, and the focus um, that therefore is on placing trainees in seats where they're likely to be roles um, upon qualification so that they have a, a real experience of them. Um, at the firm, that the trainees, as indicated earlier, they're considered um, an investment for the future. Over the last five years, uh, the firm has consistently offered um, qualification roles to, to more than 80% of the trainees that we have. Um, and the retention that we had last year, um, 2020, it was 90% of our trainees and uh, this year um, upon qualification at 93% of the trainees that we had um, were retained and, and stayed with us. I'll now, um, I think you've heard from us um, experienced campaigners, I'll hand over to, uh, to our current trainees to discuss uh, their time um, at IM. That's great. Thanks, Jason. Um, I'm just going to introduce our trainees and just get them to give a, a bit of background about themselves before we move on to their case studies. Um, so, Beth, if you could just introduce yourself first. Yeah. Hi, George. Thank you. Um, yep. Yeah, so I'm Beth. I am in the Manchester office. My current seat is in corporate and my previous seat was in planning and environmental law. Um, both really good seats, really enjoyed them. My academic background is that I went to the University of Liverpool and I studied law and then I paralegaled for a little bit at a um, small firm in Manchester before um, getting my training contract at Owen Mitchell. I then did the LPC in Manchester, paralegaled a little bit at Owen Mitchell and then started my training contract um, this year. Thanks, I'll pass on to the next uh, trainee, which I think is Ellie. Thanks, Beth. Hi, everybody. I'm Ellie. Um, I'm a second seat trainee in the Leeds office. Um, I completed my first seat in the Court of Protection Department, and I'm now in the workplace illness team. In terms of my background, I did a history degree in Sheffield, and then I went on to do the conversion. So I did the master's in law and then the LPC. Um, I did both of those at the University of Law in Leeds. Prior to starting my training contract, the only real legal work experience I had was the legal work placement at Erwin Mitchell. And then I did a few other kind of blocks of work experience. Um, prior to starting my training contract, I worked on the legal helpline at Erwin Mitchell for about six months. Uh, but apart from that, I didn't have kind of any paralegal experience or anything. Uh, so yeah, I'll pass on to the next trainee, which I think is Emily Jur. Thanks, Ellie. Hi, everyone. I'm Emily, and I'm based in the Manchester office, but this week I'm actually in the Newcastle office, so I can also vouch that both offices are very friendly. Um, my first seat was in the family department, and my current seat is court protection. And in terms of academic background, I went to Northumbria University in Newcastle and then moved to Manchester once I complete my degree in LPC and worked as paralegal for about two and a half years before starting my training contract. I'll pass on to Luke. 
Cheers, Emily Joe. Um, so yeah, um, I'm finally in, in the list of us trainees here with you uh, at the moment before the networking. I'm uh, Luke. I'm currently in the corporate seat uh, in my second seat. Um, although corporate is a, a Leeds based seat, I've been lucky enough to be able to do it from the Sheffield office. And my first seat was in the regulatory and criminal team with Jason, who, who spoke obviously a few minutes ago. Um, in terms of academic background, I didn't do a law degree, so I studied uh, geography at the University of Sheffield before staying at University of Sheffield to do both the GDL and the LPC. Um, after that, I, I did a few bits of work experience sort of, you know, summer week placements at various firms sort of in Sheffield and back, back down south where I uh, grew up. Um, before starting on the legal helpline at Owen Mitchell, where I was for about two years. Uh, I then left to go and get some uh, different kind of experience at another firm as a paralegal in, in the corporate field um, before coming back in February this year just to start my training contract back at Owen Mitchell. Um, and I think I'm now handing you all back to George, who will introduce the, the next section. Yeah, thanks guys. So if we could just have the next slide, we're going to go through some uh, case studies from the trainees. Um, so passing over to Ellie first in our Leeds office. Thanks, George. Um, so I've done my case study from the seat that I'm currently in, uh, which is the workplace illness team in Leeds. Um, I won't go into my case study too much because I could probably talk about it for a really long time. Uh -huh. But I'm going to talk to you about a case I'm currently still involved in, which is a living mesothelioma claim, um, which is a type of cancer caused by exposure to asbestos. And this particular client has asked if we can try and settle the claim during lifetime. So it means we have to kind of work as quickly and effectively as we can. And I've been allowed to be involved in this case really from my first day. So I've attended the client's property to meet the client and the family face to face. And at that meeting, we spent a lot of time going through the client's employment history to try and kind of piece together where they might have been exposed to asbestos. Um, I was kind of in charge of taking the note of the meeting and then was kind of given the responsibility to go away and do the follow up work, which involved quite a few things. So I drafted the witness statement um, for the client, which was obviously really important because it has to be really detailed. And then I had to do some really in-depth company research, which was like a really big investigation process. So I've looked into each individual company that the client worked at to try and find out as much as possible about them. It hasn't been very straightforward because this is employment from the 1960s and 70s. So some of the companies don't exist anymore or they've changed names. So it's been kind of a, a real project where I've had to look into each different one and try and find out as much as I can to identify the potential defendants from that. At the moment, I'm now kind of assisting by helping gathering evidence. So the client kindly provided some names of people he worked with um, at different places and I'm in the process of contacting those people, um, carrying out telephone interviews to take witness statements. And this has been really interesting because I'm asking people to recall information from a really long time ago. So I've had to kind of approach each one quite differently because some witnesses have remembered more than others. And it might be that I have to prompt or um, suggest things and see what information comes back. So. It's been like a really, really interesting experience and I've really learned how to kind of draw out information from people. And I've still got a lot of work to do on this file. Um, so I've still got kind of, I'm helping instruct medical experts by drafting the letters of instruction, uh, drafting the letters of instruction to council. And I'm currently drafting the letter of claim to put the potential defendants on notice. Um, but from what I've done so far, I've already kind of learned so much, I think, the most valuable experience has been learning how to communicate with people who are in a really difficult situation. So this family are obviously going through, you know, arguably the hardest time of their life. And it's really, I've learned that it's really important not just to give them the legal advice, but to make sure that they, you know, you're really listening to what they're saying. Um, and it's really important to bring the human element into it all and being able to watch partners and, um, you know, every member of the team speak to clients in this situation has been invaluable because now 
I know how to, to do it myself. Um, and secondly, I've also learned how kind of a civil claim actually works. So I had very little work experience prior to being a trainee and kind of everything I knew about a civil claim came from my LPC textbook. But now being able to work in this team and assist on on this case and other cases like this has meant I can see like the whole pre-action process um, and it just has helped me learn the different stages involved you know with a claim prior to issuing proceedings at court so yeah the whole kind of experience has been invaluable um, but I'll now pass on to Emily Jo from the Manchester office to talk about her case study. Thanks, Ellie. Um, I'm going to discuss a case I was involved with in my first seat, which was in family law. And this case concerned a divorce between a husband and wife, and they'd been married for over 30 years, so they had significant assets between them. This included a marital home in Cheshire, rental properties, investments, a family business and pensions. There were a lot of assets to divide between the two individuals and the breakup was very upsetting for both parties and they definitely weren't in a place to communicate between themselves and it got to a position where the only way to communicate was through lawyers and it went back and forth with different offers to one another and they were all declined. And the main sort of contentious aspect was that the wife wanted to stay in the marital home and the husband wanted it to be sold and the proceeds split between the two. And it therefore became very apparent that it wasn't going to be agreed between the two of them and the case went to court for a five day hearing to divide how the assets should be divided up essentially. And I was quite lucky really to have completed my seat when I did because I got to attend all five days of the hearing. And I was able to go to the trial and assist in completing all of the bundles, ensuring all the parties were kept up to date with what was happening, liaising with the court. Um, and with it all being completed remotely on Microsoft Teams, it was quite important to go through everything with the client in even more detail because they were going to be sitting by themselves at home, just staring at a computer screen and we wouldn't actually be there. So it was really important from sort of a client care point of view to go through it all in detail. Um, I was really lucky to sit in on the pre-trial discussions with the QC and my supervisor and take a detailed note. I was then involved with drafting the court documents, um, completing the first draft that would go to my supervisor and then she'd amend it and send it on to the court. Um, I've also got here another funny task that I was um, tasked to do during the trial was share my screen because it quickly became apparent that nobody else could during the trial. <laughs> so a bit on edge at first, but it became an ongoing thing and the judge would just sort of look at me and say, Emily, can you share your screen and show us that page in the bundle? So throughout all five days, I had about three different bundles of 3,000 pages on my screen ready to share at any given moment. Um, and what I learned from this experience was how to be organised before trial, um, the importance of diary reminders and ensuring that everything's in on time. I'd never been involved with a trial sort of from start to finish, so it was really good to see all of the different stages and the preparation in the weeks leading up to it. Um, organisation was just absolutely key in liaising with my supervisor, checking that we were both doing the different tasks that we said we would, liaising with the client to ensure they were kept up to date. Um, I also completed research around financial remedies and divorce and specific case law surrounding the marital home and what the likelihood would be of the wife being able to remain in that home. Um, and the importance of a verbatim note as well because counsel would often ask me to send it over after the trial and she would write her submissions based on what had been discussed so it's really important that I got that right um, and just like Ellie said as well you sort of have to step back and think this is this person's life and it was very emotional during the trial there was allegations of abuse in the marriage there was 
really serious allegations involved and although it's our day job you really realize it's the worst time of someone's life and you have to be there not just as a solicitor but also um really appreciate the emotions that's going on um so yeah that was my case study i think i'm passing over to luke georgina yeah thanks emily joe um so my case study sort of uh, on the other end of the spectrum of the type of law that the firm does I, i'm going to talk to you about a, a corporate case that i'm doing in my current seat um so this transaction is one that's actually still ongoing now i've done some work on it today in fact um but uh in essence the the buyer is looking to buy a, a, a property from our client for development but for various uh reasons uh, tax and sort of uh, other reasons the deal has actually been structured as a corporate acquisition which means that the the buyer is in buying the company that owns the property rather than the, the building itself so for what i did as a trainee in this is you know i was actually very lucky i was able to take the lead in sort of the transaction management so what i mean by that is sort of a lot of the behind the scenes work um, that you find goes on with the corporate uh, you know as well as doing the legal aspects you have to do a lot of project management um you know just basically sort of telling clients where they need to be what they need to tell you to enable you to so then go ahead and, and do the legal work so i was able to sort of take the lead in that with client contact contacting the other side solicitors um you know writing documents lists and everything in between um also, I was able to get really heavily involved in, in drafting, negotiating all of the transaction documents. So I, I helped out uh, on the SPA. I took the lead on drafting all of what we call the, the ancillary documents that go alongside that. So those are documents that are maybe not key to the transaction, but help get, you know, help get it there. So this will be board minutes, um, having the company sort of approve the key documents um, and also was heavily involved in the disclosure letter, which is where the, the seller basically has to tell the buyer everything that's not quite right with the company so that when the buyer takes over it, there's not a nasty surprise and a following litigation claim. Um, again, sort of the theme you'll probably see sort of on my corporate slide here is that, you know, there's a lot of project management. So I was working with a client and their accountants quite closely to make sure the numbers that we're quoting in the documents were right, to make sure that all the information about the company that we were, you know, telling the buyer was correct. And again, so that's a lot of project management. And, you know, I've heard it said that the corporate law in particular is, you know, it's probably the least legal seat you might do. Um, in the sense that you know half of your work is, is more project management sort of client facing as opposed to sort of the black and white letter of the law um at the end of the process or, or close to the, end of the process i also had the uh, you know a great opportunity to organize an in-person signing so because we are a yorkshire corporate team the other part the, the other lawyers on this were based in leeds but the client was sheffield based so i was i was able to sort of run organize and sort of have my own signing meeting with the client which you know i, I was able to take the lead in that um and which was a really good experience you know great it's you know actually especially given the, the current climate to meet a client in person and sort of have that interaction with them there so what did i actually learn from this well again to echo what a couple of the others have said you know organization is essential you know whatever area of law you're in whatever seat you're doing i think if, if you're organized if you know what you're doing it makes the legal work whatever that may be a lot easier um I, I sort of learned new techniques for negotiating transaction documents. They're not always things that people are happy to agree on. So you sometimes have to sort of know, know when to stand your ground, know when to concede and sort of look, get, getting better at that is something I very much learned in this transaction. And also for me, it was very much the need to consider the end goal. So I, I've had some experience as a paralegal in dealing with these types of transactions, but I never had one where what people were really buying here wasn't a company, but it was the property. So it was, it was for me difficult to try and separate the two at times, sort of realize that actually, yes, it's a corporate matter, but realistically, the only thing anyone's interested in is the building at the end of it rather than the company. And finally, uh, again, I think this is just a general tip, but one that was, you know, right at the forefront here, it's, you know, keep, keep your client informed um, and make sure, you know, they know all their options and then, you know, take their clear instructions rather than being in a position, you know, where it's like you're trying to get something agreed, but you haven't got your client's instructions. So you've then got to sort of pause the process, go back to them. You know, so ra rather than doing that as a reactive thing, if you can do that as proactively as possible, that obviously just makes your life easier, makes everyone's life easier, makes the transaction 
go ahead a lot more smoothly. So without further ado, what, what I will do, is I think passing you over now to, to Beth and George, who are going to tell you a bit about the sort of culture of the firm rather than just sort of the sort of legal work that we do. That's great. Thanks, guys. That's been really interesting to hear the different sides of um, the legal work that we do. But obviously, working at a firm, there's much more than just the, the legal part of it. Um, and this is what obviously firms call the culture of their firm. And it's quite hard to explain what a culture is. But I suppose it's um, it comes down to how employees are treated um, and how you feel about working at a particular law firm and all the things that we do for our employees over and above that legal work. Um, so Beth, who's our trainee in Manchester, is just going to go through um, these tiles here um, to explain what Erwin Mitchell's approach is. Thanks, George. Um, yeah, I've got the difficult task of trying to explain the culture of the firm, which is never easy, but I will give it uh, my best shot. So um, in terms of well-being, IAM is really passionate about the well-being of its colleagues, um, which is why IAM has over 100 100 Healthy Mind Advocates, so they're trained by Mental First Aid England um, and our HR team are trained in suicide prevention, as well as being members of the Mindful Business and Suicide Prevention Charters, and they have a well-being hub um, with a focus on a holistic approach to well-being. Um, and in addition to that, the firm for the last two years has provided um, an additional well-being day to allow colleagues to take a day off to focus on recharging their batteries. Um, I haven't actually taken mine yet, but hope, hoping to do some Christmas shopping. So um, that's good for me because I can do it on a Friday when it's less busy. Um, in terms of diversity and inclusion, um, I am really committed to creating a diverse and inclusive culture. So they really want people to flourish at the firm. They want people to, you know, they want to constantly improve their diversity. And they have a num we have a number of networking groups um, that celebrates diversity and inclusion. So um, these groups aim to support those who need a strong, stronger voice and to raise awareness of the challenges they face in society as a whole. So we have, um, I, you know, for example, I am able, I am aspiring. So people with disabilities, um, people who are grieving or people who have yeah, um, various different issues within their life can get involved in these groups um, and also help other people who might um, also be going through something at that time. So, um, you know, I am recognises the differences that their colleague, you know, employees have, um, and they're they're committed to the Halo Code, which champions the rights of staff to embrace all Afro hairstyles, which I think is a really good one. Um, particularly as well, I think that the firm is has a lot of women high up at the firm, which is re always really good to see. Um, and I think that the gender pay cap is one of the lowest um, in the legal industry, um, and the and the firm is really proud to um, be the UK's number one law firm for female partners. Uh, we've developed, you know, policies that help the firm attract and support and retain trans transgender colleagues and a lot of people from the LGBTQ plus um, community. And there's also a group for LGBTQ plus people as well, which is um, really good. I've actually been involved in a couple of things with that. But yeah, we also have a diversity board, which continues to help shape, um, you know, our diversity and inclusion strategy. strategy. And in addition to that, we have nominated trainee reps for both well-being and diversity so um you know people from any any side of any um, area of the firm can speak to them and seek further support if they if they wish to do so um, just moving on to the learning and development um all colleagues have, have access to our learning hub um, which provides a large number of training courses and webinars to continue to build our knowledge i for example in the, i'm in the corporate team now and we have a lot of um, training sessions and we have the learning hub and also um, various webinars that, that take place so we also have what's called um, trainee department checklists to support with trainee learning so you can basically tick off pieces of work that you've done and this just um, helps you to kind of guide your your training um, and your knowledge in that area and trainees also have a buddy to support um, to support them day to day so somebody who works at the firm who they can kind of go to to ask any questions um, and as I said, we take a, 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 we take part in a lot of training sessions um, to broaden our knowledge on, on various different topics. And I think also even as NQs, there's a lot of training um, sessions on offer as well. Um, something that the firm is really proud of is the um, their ability to support um, charities in the community. So we have our own registered charity, which is called IMCF, and I think that's made around two million in ch um, charitable donations, and we support 
a lot of local communities within um, each office and we also have specific charities for each office so in the Leeds office I think the charity is Maggie's Yorkshire which provides free practical emotional and social support to people with cancer and their family and friends um, in Manchester, our charity of the year is the Manchester, Manchester Central Food Bank, um, which is a nationwide network of food banks um, that helps to support um, and com support people who are basically um, in poverty and hungry and combat poverty in the UK. Um, the Newcastle charity of the year is Reedley, which is a local asbestos support and awareness group in the North East. And I think that's particularly important considering North, uh, Newcastle has such a um, kind of PI um, a lot of people be in PI, so that's really good. And Sheffield, um, our charity of the year is, well, is the Sheffield Children's Hospital Charity, um, which helps raise vital funds for the hospital. Um, and also just on that, colleagues are also given two volunteering dates every year to support our local communities. Um, so that's really good because you can kind of take off days within the year to volunteer uh, help at food banks etc and that's obviously not count doesn't count towards your annual leave um we also have uh flexible working which i think is a really good thing especially for those with children or you know outside of work they have um commitments um that they just can't get out of so um we have basically a policy that which allows you to be flexible by choice so it just basically means that the firm trusts you to do the work right and at the right at the right time and in the right way so you can kind of work the hours that you want to do um you know you may be able to work earlier in some mornings and later in some evenings and it's just basically about respecting that and um, people have you know work-life balance and they need to um and especially when working from home and um, we can kind of just create a nice work-life balance for everybody so that's really good and just just on that um we basically have a policy where you can kind of choose if you want to work in the office or work from home so that's really good um, I do a hybrid approach, but people have, you know, a variety of different needs. So um, it's really good. But yeah, that's the culture of the firm in a, a very brief overview. That's great. Thanks, Beth. Um, so if we could just move on to the next slide. Um, so hopefully you've heard already about the different departments that we have, um, the type of work that you might get involved in, and obviously a little bit more about life at Irwin Mitchell, as well as just doing those um, legal pieces of work. So if you're interested in applying, um, there are two different ways that you can apply to Erwin Mitchell. You can apply for our what we call training contract only, or you can apply to go on to our legal work placement. Um, and it's the exact same process uh, for applications. Uh, the legal work placement is for two weeks in an office of your choice. So you do need to pick an office. Um, and that takes place in June and July next year. And the dates are on our website. And it gives you obviously an insight into the firm, insight into the people you might be working with, the type of work you might be doing. Um, and we do pay you the national living wage as well while you're on the scheme. Um, sometimes people can't afford to take two weeks off work maybe um, during those summer months so people can apply for as I say what we call the training contract only route and um, that's exactly the same process so if we just move on to the next slide then I can talk you through what that process is so in terms of stage one at the moment it's a short online form and then we move on to a strengths based assessment. So the short online form will capture some of your personal details, such as name, address, school you went to, A-levels, university, um, degree, etc. We don't actually use any of that information to screen um, you in or out of our process, though. It purely is for data collection so we can see how many students went to a Russell Group University or non-Russell Group, how many did law, non-law, how many males, females, etc. So we don't see any of that information when we are screening applications. We still are um, doing what we call blind screening. Um, so once you've filled in the short online form, you're sent an email to do a strengths-based assessment. And you get an email with a link and the assessment takes around 90 minutes to complete and you've got a full week to do that. Um, so there's plenty of time there. And the assessment will test you in two ways which are relevant to the role and it also provides you with a greater insight into the role that you've applied for. And it's designed to understand both what energizes you, but also what motivates you. 
Um, so the difference from traditional competency based questions, which we've gone for in the past, is the strength based approach goes beyond those competencies and it focuses more on what you can do. The competency method, sorry, focuses on what you can do or what you have done and actually nothing more than that. It doesn't tell us whether you enjoy doing that or whether you're any good at it either. Um, whereas the strength based approach combines that I can do this and I enjoy doing it. Um, and that measures a much better level of engagement with a task um, and your natural motivation to work in a particular way, which are really important in terms of assessing your capability to be able to do a role. Um, so that's the strengths based assessment. Um, if we could just have stage two, if you're successful with that, you'll then be sent another email with a link to do a video interview. Um, so the video interview is um, six questions and you've got two minutes to prepare and then you've got two minutes to give your answer as well. So it's not with anybody, um, it is just recorded um, and it's recorded first time. So we would say do practice and prepare, um, think about recording yourself on your phone and listening to it back. Um, you do have one practice question at the start to get you into it, um, but make sure you're prepared for that interview like you would a face-to-face -face interview. Um, so then we have stage three. So if you're successful at the video interview, you'll be invited to one of our assessment centres and they'll be taking in place in March next year. And there's three stages or three assessments within that. So group exercise, written exercise and an interview as well. You'll also get the chance there to meet some of our trainees and ask them some questions um, around the work that they've been doing. If you're successful after the assessment centre, we move to stage four. And so you will either move on to the legal work placement um, or our final assessment and interview. So if you move on to the legal work placement, as I say, that will be in an office of your choice. Now, for the last two years, we've done this virtually due to the pandemic, and it's brought some real benefits to the process. It's allowed to give our um, candidates a, a wider choice of departments that they can go into. Um, so we're looking at that for next year as to how we might operate the legal work placement for next year. I think it, we, what we would like to do is a hybrid approach. So some days um, you'll be in the office for certain sessions and other days you don't need to be, but you can be if you want to, as Beth said, around that flexible by choice. Um, so it will be a, a mixture of the two, virtual and within the office as well. At the end of the placement then, or if you applied for just that training contract only, you've then got a final assessment and interview. And then if you're successful at that, um, there is an offer next July. Um, so that's our um, process. Now just moving on to our last slide. So applications opened on the 1st of November. We've had events running since October all the way through to December. And applications will close on the 2nd of January 2022. Um, now, that's a bit earlier than most of the law firms, so do take note of that date. Um, it is the 2nd of January, and you can apply anytime up until 11.59 p.m. on the 2nd of January, um, as a lot of people tend to do. Um, so that's absolutely fine. We won't close it early if we've got too many applications. It is open until the 2nd of January. Um, and I would also say we do have another virtual event coming up on the 29th of November, and that's just with our trainees. And there's more information about that on our website under graduate recruitment and then under the events tab as well. So we've come to the end of the presentation and hopefully you found that useful and you've received you know, a wide variety of information about Erwin Mitchell and that's answered some of your questions. But if you do have more questions, um, that's what the next section is for. So we'll be moving on to our breakout rooms. So for each location, uh, we've got a breakout room and actually for Leeds, we've got two breakout rooms. We have two for Manchester one for Newcastle and two for Sheffield. And I'll be in a breakout room as well if you've got any questions for myself around the early careers process and um, applications, et cetera. You can move throughout the rooms um, during this networking session. Um, you don't have to come on camera. You can ask your question in the chat, but it's always nice to see a smiley face and talk to someone, um, uh, seeing their face and getting their question from them. Um, you can, as I say, uh, just sit and listen and see what the other questions are. Uh, but yeah, if you've got a burning question, please stay around and ask either some of the regional reps who are going to be on the call. And we've got trainees in all of the rooms as well.